in grade 10, you did application of trig ratios in SOHCAHTOA, and we can apply those applications to special angles when your scenario is dealing with the 60 degrees, 30 degrees, or 45 degrees. So the first example, a ladder leaning against a vertical wall makes an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. The foot of the ladder is at a distance of two meters from the wall. Find the length of the ladder. So this sounds exactly like a grade 10 question, except we're gonna do this without a calculator and we're gonna get the exact answer instead of a rounded one. And it all starts with a diagram. So I know I have the ground and a wall and my ladder, which is the hypotenuse. So now I know that my ladder is making an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. So this angle at the bottom is 60 degrees because my ground is the horizontal, the wall is the vertical, and the ladder is the hypotenuse. And it also tells me that the foot of the ladder is at a distance of two meters from the wall. So this base is two meters. And we're looking for the length of the ladder, which I will label as X. So in grade 10, we started with drawing the diagram, which we did. And now using our reference angle, which is the 60, I'm going to label the wall as opposite, the ground as adjacent, and the ladder as the hypotenuse. And now I want to figure out if I want to use sine, cos, or tan. In this scenario, we're given the adjacent side, that two meters, and we're looking for the hypotenuse, which is x. So adjacent and hypotenuse means we're using cos. So I'm going to write cos of 60, so that's my reference angle, equals my adjacent side, which is 2, over my hypotenuse, which is x. Now in grade 10, you would go to your calculator and plug in cos 60, or you cross multiply and then go to your calculator, but we're not going to use our calculator. Instead, we're going to figure out what cos 60 is using our special triangle. So because we are dealing with the 60, I'm going to quickly draw my equilateral triangle here. The bottom angle is 60, the top is 30, the base is 1, hypotenuse 2, and then root 3. And now if I want cos 60, that's adjacent, which is 1, over hypotenuse, which is 2. So instead of writing cos 60, I'm going to write 1 half because these two things are equivalent. And then that's equal to 2 over x. And once you've done that substitution and evaluated your trig ratio, now you can just cross multiply. So to cross multiply, you can draw a quick little x where your equal sign is, and now you're just going to multiply on the diagonal. So 1 times x is x, 2 times 2 is 4, and there you go. That's the length of the ladder. And like with any application question, we are going to write our therefore statement. Therefore, the ladder is 4 meters long. And there we go. Let's try the next one. Two buildings are 40 meters apart. From the top of the shorter building, the angle of elevation to the top of the taller building is 30 degrees, and the angle of depression to the bottom of the taller building is 45 degrees. How tall is each building? So I know I have two buildings, so I'm going to draw the ground, and then two buildings, one taller than the other, and we can assume that there is someone standing on top of the shorter building. Now we know that these two buildings are 40 meters apart, and then they give us an angle of elevation and depression. And always, whenever you have an angle of elevation or depression, the angle starts with your regular sight line, which is a horizontal line. So from the person, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. And the length of that line is also 40 meters because the sight line and the distance between the two buildings, it's the exact same thing. And now I can draw in my angle of elevation and depression. So when someone looks up to the taller building, the angle of elevation is created between the sight line and the motion of looking up. So that is this angle here, and that is 30 degrees. And your angle of depression, you're looking down to the base, and that angle is created between your regular sight line to so the horizontal line and you looking down. So that's this angle in here, and that is 45 degrees. And now we have two triangles, and they're both right angle triangles, which means we can use Sokotoa again. And if I want to find the height of each building, all I really need to solve for 
is x in this bottom triangle because this length is the exact same as the height of the smaller building and I will label the height of the top triangle as y and if I add x and y I will get the height of the taller building. So let's start with x. Because I want to solve x I'm looking at the bottom triangle so I'm going to label x as opposite to 45, the 40 meters is adjacent and the hypotenuse is this unlabeled side. And now to pick my ratio, I'm looking for opposite, which is x, and I'm given adjacent for the 40 meters. Opposite and adjacent means we are using tan. So I'm going to write tan 45 equals opposite, which is x, over adjacent, which is 40. So I need my 45 degree triangle so I can figure out what tan 45 is if I can't remember off the top of my head. So I'm going to draw that isosceles triangle, the equal sides are both 1, and the hypotenuse is root 2. So if I want tan of 45, opposite is 1 and adjacent is 1. So the ratio is 1 over 1. And now I can do a quick cross multiplication. So 1 times x is x, 1 times 40 is 40, therefore x is 40. So that's the smaller building. Now we need y so that we can add it to x to figure out the height of the taller building. So now I'm going to relabel my top triangle. Opposite 30 is y, the adjacent side is still the 40, and the hypotenuse is this unlabeled side. Now I am looking for my opposite side, which is y, and just like before, I'm given the adjacent. So I will use tan once again, but this time I am doing tan 30, and that's equal to the opposite side of this triangle, which is y, over the adjacent, which is 40. Now I need that equilateral triangle so I can evaluate tan 30. So I'm just gonna look up to my previous example, and tan of 30, will be opposite, which is 1, over adjacent, which is root 3. So 1 over root 3. And I'm not going to worry about rationalizing this. I only care about that at the very end, once I have y. So I'm going to cross multiply. And when I cross multiply, I'm doing root 3 times y equals 1 times 40. So I haven't finished isolating for y, I have to divide both sides by root 3. So I get y is equal to 40 over root 3. Now this isn't proper form, I need to rationalize the denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root 3, and that gives me 40 root 3 over 3 for y. So to find the taller building, I'm going to add x and y, so 40 plus 40 root 3 over 3. And now we can write our therefore statement. Therefore, the smaller building is 40 meters, and the taller building is 40 plus 40 root 3 over 3 meters. Now if you wanted to, you could have gotten a common denominator for that 40 and added it on to um, the fraction. So I can show you that just for fun here. So this is 40 over 1. If I multiply top and bottom by 3 to get a common denominator of 3, 40 times 3 is 120. The other fraction already has the common denominator, so there it is. You can also represent the height like that. Now let's try one more example, which is also going to involve multiple triangles. Jason is staring out the window of his math class, which is eight meters above the ground. He spots two of his friends on opposite sides of him. One friend can be seen at an angle of depression of 30 degrees, while the other is spotted at an angle of depression of 60 degrees. How far apart are the two friends? So, like always, with trig application, let's start with a diagram. So here's the ground, and they tell us that Jason is kind of sandwiched between the two friends because the friends are on opposite sides of him. 
So Jason is here at the top in class and his height is eight meters. And he spots two friends and we're gonna draw in the angles of depression. So just a reminder that the angle of depression is always formed with the horizontal line. So I'm gonna draw that sight line. And for the first friend, the angle of depression is 30 degrees. So the angle of depression is created with this horizontal line and you looking down. So this right here is 30 degrees. The other friend is spotted at an angle of depression of 60 degrees, so that will be this angle. Do not put an angle of depression here or here inside the triangle because an angle of depression or any angle, even the angle of elevation, it's created with the horizontal line and where you are looking. Okay, now something I forgot to label on my triangle is that I have created two right triangles. And my goal is to see how far apart these two friends are, which means I need to solve for x in this triangle and y in this triangle, or the other way around. Now, if we look at our triangles, you will notice that we don't have an angle inside the triangle just yet, but we can use some of our triangle angle property knowledge. So first of all, if you want, you can just solve for this angle here because these two angles must add up to 90. So this angle must be 30 and this angle might, must be 60. Or if you would like, you can use your Z pattern or the alternate pattern, which is if I draw a Z right here, this angle is also 60. And if I use the Z pattern here, this angle is also 30. So I'm actually just gonna use my Z pattern. So this is 60 and this is 30. And now I can label opposite adjacent and hypotenuse because I actually have a reference angle inside my triangle. So now I'm gonna start with solving for X which means opposite 60 is the eight, the adjacent is X, and the hypotenuse is the unlabeled side. So when I'm picking my ratio, I have opposite, and I'm looking for adjacent, so we are using tan in this scenario. So tan of 60 equals opposite, which is eight, over adjacent, which is X. So we need to figure out tan 60. So I'm gonna go back up, to my equilateral triangle. Tan of 60 means opposite is root three and adjacent is one. So that is just root three over one. And then that is equal to eight over X. And now I can cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, root three times X equals one times eight. And of course I must divide both sides by root three so that we get eight over root three. But this of course is not proper form. We have to rationalize that denominator. So I'm gonna multiply numerator and denominator by root three to get eight root three over three. So that's the distance of one friend to Jason horizontally. Now let's go to the next triangle. In the next triangle, I'm gonna use 30 as my reference angle eight is still opposite, but this time the adjacent is Y and the hypotenuse is the other unlabeled side. And again, I'm given opposite, I'm looking for adjacent. So once again, we are using tan. So tan 30 equals opposite eight over adjacent Y. I'm gonna go back to my triangle and I want tan of 30. So opposite 30 is one adjacent is root three. So one over root three. And that's gonna equal eight over y. And now I can cross multiply. One times y is y, and then eight times root three. And this one, that's it. Now, if I wanna find the actual distance between the two friends, I have to add these. So I'm gonna label d for distance. So we have eight root three over three plus eight root three over one. And the reason I wanna put it over one is because I wanna get a common denominator because I can see that both of these terms have a root three, which means they can get collected. But in order for the numerators to get added and collected, we need a common denominator. So I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by three and remember when you're multiplying 
um, numbers that have radicals in them, coefficients get multiplied together and radicals get multiplied together. So I'm going to multiply 8 times 3 to get 24, and the root 3 does not change. And now I can add my numerators, and because they are like radicals, I will do 8 plus 24 to get 32, and the root 3 does not change. And there we go. That's the distance between the two friends. So I can write my therefore statement. Therefore, the friends are 32 root 3 over 3 meters apart. And that's it. Very similar to grade 10. So read your scenario, draw a triangle, pick your ratio. And the only difference is, instead of going to your calculator to figure out what the ratio is equal to, you're going to use your special triangles. And once you've swapped the trig expression with the ratio, then you can cross multiply to isolate for your variable. And that's it.